just some charts I want to share with you quickly. The risk model and the S&P trend. The S&P trend, it turned bearish uh, for one day there on Thursday with the waterfall sell off and then turned back with the rebound uh, again. To get a reversal, it's got to stay red. The trend will move to red and remain that way. Uh, the risk on is still in place, but if we try to go up back above the uh, broken trend line here and the other one I'm talking about in this video, then it can turn down. If we start breaking down further, taking out the 20 period moving average in the daily time frame and the 200 in the 60 minute time frame and the 10 week moving average, then it can go into a risk off mode here. Um, if I bring it up close, you can see the risk line has turned red. It remains red, but if it turns back to green, then you buy more time. If it remains red, we got to drop down below this low. Uh, we did confirm the candlestick of breaking the trend line. You got to get a follow through now, breaking this lower boundary, the rising wedge. Talking about the other trend line that still needs uh, confirmation and a follow through, but currently we are still in a risk on environment if we're to sell off out the 20 day moving average we've got to see this uh this turn bearish and then again we've got to see the uh risk line remain red and the s p trend change so i wanted to share that with you again reversal happens this will turn bearish and validate it critical mass 2.0 the critical mass line in the cloud critical mass line critical mass uh, cloud 2.0 still bullish we dropped below it got back above it we'll be watching to see if the signals begin to change Critical mass cloud still in positive territory. Some P daily here. Again, I have mixed signals. Some signals have turned bearish. Others have turned bearish, turned back to bullish. Others have not yet turned, but here we have uh, a drop below the rainbow cloud. Currently on a sell signal. Bounce power has gone negative, but swing trend line going from green to red back to green. So again, we need to see signals confirm and we need a uh, breakdown here below this low, the bearish engulfing. Uh, if we're to lower, we did get a, a bullish inside day uh, there on Friday. So we'll be watching to see attempt a bigger recovery or if we confirm the breakdown of these trend lines. And here's my original critical mass cloud. And again, we hit the critical mass line in the cloud. We bounced, we broke it, and then we bounced. Well, some distribution is taking place here from the red dots we've seen recently. And little stars telling us distribution is taking place marking some liquidation taking place here near the highs. Again, we've got to take out the critical mass line and uh, uh, move into the lower end of the cloud. This little arrow over here telling us a possible reversal. Again, it's saying it could happen, but you got to see the critical mass line in the cloud turn red and trigger a sell signal. That hasn't happened yet. That will mark a turn. We got over here, the warning sign distribution was taking place and eventually that was confirmed with a sell signal and a reversal confirmed here. Uh, we got the bullish signal here and at that same time right underneath it is a little arrow happen simultaneously and then here we tried to turn couldn't do it reaffirm the signal so we do know that distribution is taking place but there's no confirmed reversal yet we didn't get a breakdown and follow through breaking of the rising wedge and we haven't gotten the confirmation or follow through either with the break of the recent trend line that we're talking about this week and in this video. So again, we'll be watching. Do we see the highs hold or do we go back up and try to challenge those highs? When you, the two trend lines, one is this trend line and then the other is the upper channel. We'll be looking at that later in the video. Please support the channel with the link directly below that allows me to be able to provide you this information. If the indicators you like to charge, please let me know that by supporting the channel. I do need your help in order to make it work. I don't have any sponsors, just a direct relationship with you because I don't want to sell you a bunch of stuff. If you need your help, please consider helping out today. Take a moment to do that. I would really, really appreciate it. You can donate any amount you want. Follow the link below. Thank you for your consideration for that. Now, with the waterfall sell-off that we had on Thursday ahead of the jobs report, the Dow post posted its worst day since March of 2023, and that was when the banking crisis was going on. Even though it recovered with the jobs report, and it was down 3%, over 3% at the lows of the week, it still had its worst week of the year in 2024, at least so far. It had the worst day earlier in the week on Thursday, and then we posted the worst week. Will that result in a reversal? The Dow was down 3% at the lows of the week. It ended down 2.27%. 
still below the 10 week moving average here, but I've seen sellers up at this level just below 40,000 here, uh, here in the high 39,000 area. There were sellers there. And we rallied back up to it this week. Following week, there were sellers lurking there yet again. So uh, we're paying attention to now. I had sold off by 3% at the lows of the week. The NASDAQ and S&P were down 2% each. Dow did take a bigger hit. The Dow still closed down 2.27%. NASDAQ and S&P rebounded. A possible one black crow candle. And it's what a one black crow candle is. You come up to the previous peak or just below it right there. Uh, and then you end up closing uh, below that previous week's bar. A possible reversal bar with a one black crow two week pattern here on the Dow, something we're paying attention to if we stop making new highs. And you know, while the SP and NASDAQ are still above their 10 week moving averages, uh, the Dow lost it at the close of the week. Even if the Dow rebounds, does the high hold? Dow's been in this kind of trading range, and, and by the way, we wiped out. Uh, at the lows of the week, we had wiped out three weeks of gains, three weeks of gains with one big swoop. We rebounded off of that, but still managed to wipe out most of the gains over the previous two weeks. Dow in this trading range in the last three weeks now, and there is a possible head and shoulders formation uh, that could be forming here. Uh, you probably can see it a little bit better on the daily chart, but uh, if we do rebound back up, and get a lower high on the Dow, you've got a possible head and shoulders formation. NASDAQ has been moving sideways for six weeks. The Dow pushed above this level, and it's kind of been in this trading range for three weeks here. Have this larger trading range for a potential head and shoulders pattern. Possibly the head formation completing with the waterfall sell-off that we had there on Thursday. If we rebound ahead of the CPI or with the CPI, and you stop making new highs you get a lower high but rebound off of this horizontal level of support then we'll be watching to see if the stock market begins to roll over should we get a rebound and begin to turn back down then you've got that potential head and shoulders here's the weekly chart with the dow down 2.27 after being down three percent recovering off the lows a little bit still a sharp decline and the worst week that we've had for the dow for the year and here's the dow since the october 2023 low and again above that 10 week moving average now taking it out but you, again you got this possible head and shoulders formation we'll see if anything becomes of that we get back above the 10 week if we hold it and again the Dow's had these major negative diversions form uh, with that high that did develop there three weeks ago uh, just like the S&P we hit that trend line S&P went slightly higher three points above its high the Dow did not last week the Dow made a lower high so did the Nasdaq so we'll be watching to see what becomes of this bar and it could be a one black crow even if we rebound and get a right shoulder but you got to see confirmation of that candlestick if it is a one black crow and stop making new highs you the Dow because it had its worst week for the entire year again we've had a couple of down weeks here but not anything significant and the corrections have been sideways as we're forming these major negative diversions now now here is the s p at the lows of the week now it was down over two percent at the lows of the week and again I talked about at the beginning of the week when we had that gap on tuesday i talked about a possible recovery for a hanging man or a doji kind of a candlestick we were to get the rebound about the bullish uh, patterns that's set up on the intraday charts that we are going to get some kind of attempted rebound. We did. Remember, we had a four-day losing streak ahead of on the Dow ahead of the jobs report due uh, Thursday that could allow for a rebound on Thursday. So I talked about a possible rebound. We had the uh, patterns on the intraday charts, which I talked about earlier in the week. Talked about on Tuesday and Thursday, possibly a rebound after the waterfall sell-off we got on Thursday, possibly, and we got a, on the 60-minute chart, or I'm sorry, on the 50-minute chart, no rebound, no up bar, no uptick on the bar, 15-minute time frame for nearly four hours straight. So I told you, and that was ahead of the jobs report, and then we had the inverted take on the 15-minute chart, so I told you we could get a rebound. So I told you, it could be that if we get a rebound, about on Tuesday and Thursday, that again we could form a hanging man or a doji 
This is the S&P before the rally on Friday. Those are the week here on Thursday, and here it is after. And it moved up off of the lows, being down over 2% for the week, and we ended down less than 1% lower, 0.95%. We ended lower by exactly 50 points to close at 52.04 after, again, moving off of that 52.65 area. So again, is what I'm watching is to see if we stop making new highs. Now again, we did recover, got a possible hanging man candlestick. It's kind of sloppy. Usually you wanna see the hanging man candlesticks get a smaller uh, real body than what we have here. This is kind of a big real body for a hanging man, but it does meet the criteria nonetheless. Now the bullish scenario would be that this is forming on the intraday charts a triangle a, a, a ascending triangle with the bottoming tail that gets an upward resolution goes up to the trend lines i talked about in my last video through those trend lines for boundary of the channel and the rising wedge but be the bullish scenario or the dow has now filled its gap so we could see an attempted rebound in the market the dow attempts to get a bigger rebound as i talked about my last update We're watching to see does the nasdaq try to make new highs or does that end so again kind of a, a sloppy pattern but nonetheless it is a pattern but candlesticks listen candlesticks are meaningless unless they're confirmed we had a doji spinning top here never got confirmed i talked about this when, when they formed had a topping tail the gravestone doji here never got confirmed candlesticks are meaningless the patterns are set up unless they are confirmed we had a potential hanging man or a bottoming tail here that was confirmed to the upside not the downside so again candlesticks have to be confirmed so i'll be watching uh this pattern right here this potential hanging man candlestick Here's the 10 week moving average. We're still above it on the S&P. The Dow closed below it. If we zoom out here in the weekly time frame, you can see again, we've had a down week here. We've had other down weeks. We had in December a sideways correction. We've had other down weeks, but really we've had any kind of down week has really just been a kind of a sideways corrective move. No retracement, no reversal. Signals have been consistently bullish. We've got kind of a mixed bag. Some signals have turned bearish, others have not turn bearish, turn right back to bullish, as really we're kind of going sideways here. I wanted to take the time to show you these weekly charts. And again, S&P on less than 1% after dropping 2%, possible hanging man candlestick. We'll see what becomes of that. That means that we stop making new highs. We got to confirm it and then close below our 10 week moving average. Of the 10 week moving average, good things are happening. When you're below the 10 week moving average, bad things are happening. Now, NVIDIA was down about 2.5% for the week, got a candle of indecision in the form of a spinning top. You want to watch NVIDIA because, again, NASDAQ follows NVIDIA. NVIDIA, this is our second week lower. Again, we had this topping tail. So far, we have not been able to exceed that. We have Hanging Man follow that, both bearish candlesticks, but neither has been confirmed. So, again, if we see confirmation going forward, possibly next week with the CPI data for the market, if NVIDIA confirms those candlesticks, NASDAQ can reverse. NASDAQ has been going sideways for six weeks straight. NVIDIA has been going sideways for five weeks straight. Until these candlesticks are confirmed, NASDAQ could still move higher. We need to see NVIDIA reverse if the NASDAQ is to reverse. Now here's the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was down over 2%. It had taken out the 10-week moving average at the lows but it rebounded just as it did over here and back over here the nasdaq 100 was down over two percent it recovered and it was down just uh 0 0.80 percent for the week down 146 points at the lows of the week again it had lost 18,000, and it was had lost a 10 week moving average again nasdaq peaked three weeks ago so far and it has gone sideways now for six weeks straight so suggesting again we're seeing distribution no distribution is going on i have shown you the charts where we can actually see liquidations and distribution taking place that early in the week and i'll probably show you again today
this could be suggesting that uh, institutions are selling overvalued tech stocks as again we rally up and you get selling and selling they push it back up and we went slightly higher and you get more selling and selling and now they're pushing it back up but we've been going sideways in this range for six straight weeks so again the rectangle it's either a stage three top that's going to break down or you're going to have a resolution up but there are major negative diversions in the weekly time frame with this consolidation but the rallies are being sold suggesting again the institutions are selling overvalued overvalued uh, tech stocks but again uh, here's nasdaq had more volatility with the corrections, but they have been sideways corrections uh, than the more, more volatility than the S&P 500 and the Dow. But again, if we're to turn it down, you've got to do two things. Well, really three things. You got to you got to break the 200 period and hold below it in the 60 minute time frame. You got to take out the 20 and stay below it in the daily. You got to take out this 10 week moving average in the weekly. And if you start doing that, then you can get a reversal right now moment we're trying to bounce off of that 10 week moving average as we did over here and here and here so again it's just going to be a bounce or a break here in the weekly time frame for uh, NASDAQ and I always look at the weekly charts every single day and it's what I've been watching on the NASDAQ are these divergences and you have it on the S&P but you have more divergences on the NASDAQ it's very difficult to find the indi an indicator that doesn't have a negative divergence in the more recent price action or in the uh, the bigger uh, trading range with the previous peaks in July. Sideways for six weeks, we're kind of doing what we did back over here, back between November and December. We we peaked in November, we came down and then we came back up, and you were just in this trading range. For like nine or ten weeks from when we were moving towards the highs uh, to when we came back down and then turned back up but you had this kind of large trading range here where we're going sideways for six weeks and we had a couple of those bars into this trading range so again several weeks pushing up into the highs pulling back and then testing the highs very similar to what we had over here now this channel we got a candle of indecision this week in the trading range. I keep saying, if we push higher, then we can go back up and hit this trend line one more time in the channel. And again, I talked about my last video. The market is designed to do as much damage to as most people as possible, some bears alike. If we pushed up through here, it would trigger stops, stop out the shorts, and it would suck in the longs awesome to buy a potential top if we see a reversal follow so uh, and then and then they would get the rug pulled out from under them so uh, if that were to happen now again it may not we may see a downward resolution because we are seeing the uh, the oscillators get uh, complete the negative diversions now we don't have it right here on two of them but we have it on all the rest the rollover completing a potential uh, reversal pattern and uh, we're seeing the MACD in the weekly time frame roll over, uh, going negative with the histogram that's uh, completing the diversions here. And again, with all of my oscillators here, again, it's uh, either already rolled over or now rolling over, like with the MACD rolling over here. But uh, don't have it here. We only have it on two of them where it has not rolled over yet. All the rest, uh, we've seen uh, the rollover uh, on all of them except for two. So I think these divergences are going to play out. The question is, uh, do we get one more pop into this upper channel line here if we try to push up, up through this level? And again, in the consolidation, we went back and we got a lower high right here. And P got a higher high. With the peak, we already had the divergence roll over here and it was unable to turn back up with the lower high. Here we haven't rolled over and we're just starting to roll over. So again, we're going to be watching to see if we break down from the consolidation or get one more push higher and then turn down. And again, we're going to go lower. We got to take out that 10 week moving average I talked about 
on the previous chart. Do have the divergence on the MAC or on the RSI, pardon me, and we could now be confirming a lower high. Got a larger divergence here going back to the July peak. Just pay attention to these signals in the weekly time frame because again, taking their time forming as we've gone sideways for six weeks and we may even get another fake out uh, if, if we end up getting a reversal, should we get a pop back up to this trend line right here. But right now, yeah, we have other divergences in the more recent price action on NASDAQ, the S&P 500. And again, if we start to break down below the 10 week moving average, then maybe they play out. This may not be done. If we turn back up, we still may come up and hit that upper uh, channel line before turning. Similar divergences formed at the July peak and back in November of 2021, similar to what we have right here going on. Like I said, we could see the consolidation go on and even pop up above it if we don't take up that 10 week moving average and again get something like this where it just goes and goes and then the bottom fell out of the NASDAQ. So just something we're paying attention to the upper channel line here on the NASDAQ. In the weekly time frame on the NASDAQ, we did get a red bar. We had one previously, but then it was followed by more green bars. Now we're getting it again. This is what formed when we began to get the sell off off of the July high. This is what formed when we began to turn down off of the November high. And again, each time you began to get the drop below the 10 week moving average. We got back above it, but then it failed at the red dots of resistance. And again, you had that sell off. I think it was right around 13% uh, uh, or something like that, maybe 14% uh, with that decline. Here, we turned down and we ended up dropping 37.5%. Once we dropped below that 10 week moving average, we lost it. And we began to get the reversal of conditions here. But that was associated with the, uh, the red bars. We had gotten a red bar but still went back up, tested the highs, but then it reversed in December. That was it when we lost that 10 week moving average. And as the MACD is now uh, getting the diversions, completing the diversions, rolling over, uh, going negative this week, we're also seeing it here again, a lower tower here on the awesome oscillator and now the red. So you do have this diversions now complete but to get the reversal, we've got to take out that 10 week moving average uh, here on the weekly chart for the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's 10 week moving average is 18,006. So we've got to take out that 18,000 level if we're going to get the reversal of conditions here in the weekly time frame and begin to see these uh, bars begin to play out. Now, sometimes, let me just tell you this. Sometimes you get the red bars and you see an, a, a reversal fall and we did get a down week. It's still a blue bar reflecting the trend, but sometimes you get the red bars with the diversions and it begins to play out immediately. Other times you start getting a red bar or two, it goes back up and makes a new high and then it turns and the diversions plays out. Whichever way this will play out, we'll see. But if we do go higher, the upper channel line that I've been showing you in the weekly time frame is likely where we're headed, which would be uh, directly overhead in a consolidation that's either going to have a resolution down or up. If the resolution is up, then that upper channel line that I've been showing you is where uh, NASDAQ would be headed. Resolution down, then we need to take out the 10 week and we need to close below the cloud. If you close below the cloud around the 17,820 um, area, then getting a reversal of conditions. So again, we'll be watching what happens here with the sideways consolidation. But the red bars that we're getting in the sideways consolidation is telling us that momentum is beginning to wane. Even if we go back up and hit the upper boundary, we know that distribution is taking place by the bigs, the big institutional guns. See the sideways move here represented in the daily time frame, And again, uh, we've been going sideways for weeks. And again, you can really, really see even down here where we moved up towards the highs, you can really, really see that, uh, again, you, you're getting these sideways moves and then you're turning back to bullish. It's going from bullish to bearish, back to bullish, bullish, bearish, back to bullish. And then now we're bearish. If we go back to bullish, you could still get 
another divergence and go up and hit that upper boundary and again to suck in the bulls by a top to trigger stops with the short uh, with the uh, short positions with the bears and create total confusion the the uh, stack is testing the 50 period moving average here and trying to bounce off of it so if we see a bullish reversal of conditions next week if we rally with the cpi say end of the cpi or say we rally with the cpi comes in tame we may see larger diversions developing create total confusion the illusion of a new bull market that here we go could mark the very the very top or create a short squeeze stop out the shorts before the rug pull in total confusion among both bulls and bears alike just something we're paying attention to this is clearly showing we're going sideways even if we go higher on the nasdaq again you have those negative diversions that i've been showing you in the weekly time frame they're going to play out get a pop it's probably going to be just up to that upper channel line the shorts are stopped out they'll likely try to reset their positions at that trend line same thing with the s p we are now getting this reversal of conditions from tuesday it remains and i told you to be watching do we go up and fill the gap and start turning down let me just bring up the nasdaq again because we talked about this Oops, sorry about that. Uh, we talked about the same thing on the NASDAQ. Again, you've, you've got these bearish reversal of conditions. I told you we're either going to go up and fill the gap and start breaking down. We've got to take out the 50. got to take out the 10-week moving averages if, if that's going to be the case. Or we eventually go back up and try to challenge the high. Well, we had the sell-off, waterfall sell-off that gave us this big nasty red bar right here thursday but we're attempting a rebound so it's what i'm going to be watching again do we try to re rebound back up nasdaq has the red dots of resistance here at the 18,325 area if you clear that you can try to challenge the highs with the resistance zone but remember the s p and nasdaq they are diverging so it's what i'm watching for is does nasdaq stop making new highs does nvidia stop making new highs or do we start Trying to clear those highs and get one final rally as we form those negative diversions on the weekly chart they're now completing all of those indicators that i showed you those oscillators except for two of them getting the rollovers i'll be watching do we get back above the 10 and 20 period moving average nasdaq's come up to it here if we go higher you've got your red dots of resistance at the 18,325 area and the overhead resistance above that and uh, again if we clear that you've got that trend line the upper channel line of the rising channel that we looked at on the weekly chart so wanted to show you that and we've got mixed signals some signals are still bullish some are bearish Nasdaq's going sideways same thing for the S&P 500 the same thing for the S&P 500 Tuesday we got the bearish reversal of conditions I told you we had that gap I told you the gap is likely going to fill we did fill the gap we came back we filled the gap got a gap and trap with it and then we had that waterfall sell off for four hours nearly four hours on Thursday ahead of the jobs report attempted a rebound but look at what happened now while Nasdaq is stalling at the 10 and 20 period moving average S&P got back above the 20 it's still below the 10 and it stalled there uh, we had it, we hit it at the highs but it did stall there so again do we start breaking down further we try to climb up hit the red dots resistance the upper boundary of the cloud here and again Going into the 5230s or 5240 area here uh, with the upper boundary of the cloud. And above that, again, you have your resistance zone, the peak here and the peak back over here, which was our high there at the 5265 area. So do we try to climb there or do we get further evidence, more signals turning bearish that we actually are getting a reversal? But recovering back above our 20 period, the 10 is still above the 20. Some things to be paying attention to the s p and nasdaq stop making new highs Re recover do we just recover a little bit more but not make new highs or do we recover and try to take out those levels so just something worth paying attention to we still have a bearish reversal of conditions here our signals need to turn bearish and again you've got a hold below that 10 period so far we are but we got to see more signals turn bearish confirmation on a follow through trend lines that we talked about that we recently broke in our last update we talked about that trend line that we broke from the rising wedge we got confirmation to it but no follow-through yet we need a push below the bearish engulfing candlesticks that we got there on Thursday if we're 
going to reverse. If it happens, then you're taking out the 20 period here. You're taking out the 200 in the 60 minute time frame, taking out the 10 week in the weekly time frame, which is what is necessary for a reversal. Do we remain with a bearish reversal of conditions going into next week? And let me just show you the awesome oscillator. We still may try to form uh, diversions in this recent consolidation here that we've had over the last couple of weeks. And here it is. Again, here's the daily chart of the S&P 500. And look at the awesome oscillator. Now, again, we've got the bearish reversal of conditions going on. But I wanted to show you these awesome oscillators in the daily time frame. Because, again, if we try to turn back up with the CPI data, you still might hit the trend lines I've been talking about on NASDAQ, hit the trend line, or the trend line on NASDAQ with that upper channel, but hit the uh, upper boundary, the rising wedge, or the upper channel line on the S&P 500. If we get more green here, and again, reversal of conditions, but it, we don't have confirmation and a follow through with the trend line that we broke there on Thursday, and we don't have uh, confirmation to the breakdown of the rising wedge, which we did there on Tuesday, getting our bearish reversal of conditions. So if we see things revert back to a bullish reversal of conditions, then you're likely going to see a an attempt to break and challenge these highs. And if we do, uh, I've shown you the channel where we're going. Maybe I'll show you in a second, but let me just show you this. So I'm watching the os my oscillator. Do we get green next week at some point with the CPI or do we start seeing it go negative and the MACD start moving towards the center line going negative and we start coming down towards our 50 and holding below the 20 there, the blue line, and remaining below it. Uh, we got back above that 20 period moving average. You got to take that out, remain below it if we're going to sell off. The thing I showed you on the NASDAQ, I want to show you here again, uh, if we lose a 10 week, we need to see red on the awesome oscillator and eventually have it go negative. Uh, over here we don't have the red yet we did get it with the we did get it with the nasdaq but we don't have it yet with the s p 500 so we'll be watching we did get a sloppy hanging man candlestick might mark a reversal if we start turning down but we've got to take up that 10 week moving average here if we're going to turn down when you're above the 10 week you're likely rising when you're below the 10 week you're likely going lower Now, same thing here, NASDAQ weekly chart, or uh, S&P weekly chart, these divergences, but so far it has not produced a reversal. Possible hanging man, if it's not, then again, you can still flirt with the upper boundary of the channel, upper boundary of the rising wedge. Divergences are still in place. We have triple negative divergence on some indicators. If we were to go a little higher, here we would have quadruple negative diversions. That's the strongest triple and quadruple negative diversions is our, the strongest sell signals in technical analysis. And it's a negative diversions. If we start getting confirmation and breaking down below the 10 week moving average, as I've talked about, then you've got a possible hanging man with the triple diversions. But if we do go back up higher, then there's always that possibility of a quadruple diversions here. It was a triple negative divergence that gave us the July peak and a triple negative divergence as well with the January top. Last update, I talked about how we're turning back up here on these 60 minute charts forming in bullish diversions here at the 200 and getting back above the 20 period in the daily could allow us to challenge these highs over here. So I'm showing you the awesome oscillator daily time frame because again, it still might us up into the upper channel line one more time on both NASDAQ and S&P if we hold above the 200. If you drop below the 200, that's bearish. If you bounce off of it, hold above it, try to continue to rally, then that's bullish. And I'm watching the 60-minute charts closely. Watching the daily charts. S&P broke that trend line from the more recent price action. Broke it. Again, we've already broken on Tuesday. We've already broken the rising wedge trend line uh, right there with that with that bar right there, the rising trend line that goes way back, which I've shown you, but we broke it. So here, if we get back above this trend line and challenge those highs, if we get rejection here, then we need to drop below that 10 week moving average in the weekly time frame, the 20 day moving average, which again, we got back above it after breaching it there on Thursday. You can see that blue line right there is the 20 period and our 200 period on the 60 minute chart did bounce and get back above. I said if we break down further, get the confirmation of follow through to the trend line we broke, and we've already broken this trend line with the rising wedge, uh, seeing 
you know, the, the confirmation and follow through with the other trend line and the, the, the follow through here with this trend line, which we've already confirmed, get a bigger sell off and you'll be taking out the 20 period in the daily, you'll be taking out the 200 and the 10 week in the weekly time frame, uh, the 200 in the 60 minute time frame, I should say. We try to rally. Again, these trend lines come back into play up here, the upper boundary of our channels. And again, could the RSI push back up? Yeah, it could. It could, could get one more reference point of a diversion. So that ha could happen. Drop below the 50. Now we're getting back above it on the RSI. If we do go higher, again, you have the upper channel line there on the S&P 500. Same thing for the NASDAQ channel. So if this divergence on the 60-minute chart allows the S&P to get back above this trend line right here, you will have failed to get confirmation of the break of that trend line. You'll need confirmation and a fall through as I've talked about. You get back above this, it buys more time. You get rejection here, that's bearish. And then you can get confirmation and the follow through. So we'll be watching to see which way that plays out next week with the CPI data. If CPI come in hot or, or, or cold, is it cool? Even if it is hot, again, last time the market rallied on it anyways. Same thing with the Dow, the Dow broke its trend lines. It broke this trend line right here. It broke the, the rising wedge trend line, but we never did fill the gap on the Dow. If we do attempt to fill the gap, then the S&P might try to challenge the highs. Uh, we'll be watching broken trend lines on the Dow and the S&P, but the NASDAQ uh, just right under, uh, right above it, uh, right there under our 20 period moving average, if we can get back above that as well. So again, we're at these trend lines and just slightly above it right here, stowing at the 20 period and the Dow and the NASDAQ are still, or the Dow and the S&P are still below these trend lines from our most recent price action. As you can see again on the S&P here, remember we broke the trend line uh, of the rising wedge. We broke it on Tuesday and then back tested it, overthrew it, filled the gap. So again, if we get rejection here, then that could be it. If we go up of the 10 period, then and you got a shot at challenging the highs. We need to see here, we've got confirmation, but we never got the follow through on the other trend line. We need both confirmation and follow through or signals to turn bearish if this is turning down. But we'll be watching the RSI. Does the RSI break back into below, levels below 50 and we, we break down and, and get the confirmations we're looking for? Or do we buy more time and end up the highs or even going back above them and hitting the upper boundary of the trend line or the upper boundary of the channel that I showed you on the other chart just a little bit ago. By the way, on NASDAQ, I just wanted to point this out. If I take the trend line back uh, here and include the shadow right here, but exclude the low here, the other the other trend line, I'm including this area here. Whoop, I, did, I didn't uh, do that very well. But uh, if, if we include the shadow right here from these two lows, you're kind of really bouncing off of that level off of the 50 period moving average. So uh, I've got both trend lines drawn there, but the Dow and the S&P have clearly broken the trend lines from the recent minor lows. They got to get back above those trend lines if we're going to try to rebound. If you hold below them, that's bearish. If you get back above them, you can rebound. If S&P rebounds and those trend lines up here come into play. Both the Dow and the S&P have broken those trend lines from the recent lows. They got to get back above them for to rebound. If we hold below them, then that's a sign of weakness. Then we need to get the confirmation of follow through to the break of these trend lines. If we do get confirmation of the trend lines, again, we got to lose that 200 period on the 60 minute chart. We got to lose a 20 in the daily. We got to lose a 10 week in the weekly time frame. Green parameters got to go negative. And then just quickly more on the weekly charts. We have again, the RSI extremely overbought. We have already a negative diversions on the RSI with the NASDAQ. We don't have to have one here. It could just be overbought over here at the July top. We did not have a diversions, but we did have one back over here at the January 2022 top. At the multiple point negative diversions with the stochastic in the weekly time frame. But here I want to continue to point this out. Look at the NAAIM closure index for active money managers. Again, we've had this diversions now and we're turning down off of our recent high here boundary of the channel and that divergence uh, has formed and again you have an extreme being reached with the divergence uh, the extreme marked the, uh, the uh, December top there they only corrected sideways and then the previous uh, peak was uh, at this extreme was the July top where we did see a sell-off P we had a divergence at extremes in November and then we went higher in January and completed a triple divergence there
but it's worth watching this because either we're going to turn with this divergence, try to slam into the upper channel line and maybe form a triple divergence here. We do have a nice looking channel. We'll see if we flirt with it some more or not. Going into next week with the CPI data.